Welcome to TF2 Tactic Knowledge, your source for intelligence to get you prepared for competitive TF2. Last time in our beginner's video, we covered the basics of building priority order for the engineer. In this video, we upgrade our intelligence level from beginners to intermediate and get into the real knowledge an engineer needs to know about when it comes to competitive TF2. As with our previous video, this guide assumes you know how the engineer class is played at least in terms of using your weapons and building your buildings as well as upgrading them. With that disclaimer out of the way, let's get started. It's tactics time! In our last video, we talked about building order priority and how it changes in order when playing on blue or red. This time, we're going to talk about the process of building placement and how exactly you want to go about placing your buildings. Again, based on whether or not you're attacking or defending. Once again, we will use Payload as an example, but we'll also be using a specific map to cover what it looks like from a practical and tactical point of view. For this example, we will use a commonly played Payload map that nearly every Team Fortress 2 player has ever been on, especially getting into competitive TF2. Payload Bad Water one of the most commonly asked questions for engineers is what makes a good position for each of his buildings and why. We will answer and explain these on Bad Water, more specifically the area around the first point, to demonstrate what we need. In part 2 of this intermediate guide, we'll use a 5CP map to speak more on this subject. Now, the topic of building placement covers two different angles, as it varies again whether you're attacking or defending, at least for payload. We'll start with the center gun, because people often forget why placing it in a particular spot is almost a necessity and anywhere else is pointless or an obvious mistake. The purpose of the defender's sentry gun is to force an engagement, meaning in order for the payload to advance, it must get through the defending team's sentry gun, thus forcing Blue to confront it. However, the sentry gun must be able to cover multiple angles in order to ensure it forces this confrontation. Otherwise, the attacking team can just go around it and avoid the defending team's strongest line of defense entirely. Next, when placing the sentry gun, you want to position it so that it has the high ground advantage, because it is much safer and easier to spam damage down onto an enemy, because you can dictate more easily where your damage goes, whereas whoever is below you has to angle it properly whilst under fire, in order to score a possible direct hit. Next, you want to place the sentry so that from its position, the sentry gun covers nearly every avenue of attack that the attackers have to take in order to even get past the sentry, and ensure that it positions so that it forces blue to confront it. At the same time, however, you want to make sure that blue doesn't have a line of sight against the sentry outside of its range of fire, or that can't be covered by your team, otherwise they can easily destroy it without it being able to shoot back. For blue, however, the sentry gun doesn't need as much attention to placement, but it is still necessary to think about strategically, because where you plant it will determine what job it has to do, whether it be covering a flank or providing cover for your team's push. So that's what you want to keep in mind for sentry placement, a location that gives your sentry the height advantage and covers the most area while forcing the enemy team to confront it if on red, and to cover a flank or provide cover for a push if on blue. The dispenser, while often overlooked, requires just as much care and placement as the sentry gun, because while the sentry gun is the most important building in the middle of a fight, it's during the short lulls of combat that the dispenser is the most important for the team. Now, this works for both red and blue, so keep that in mind when considering where to place your dispenser. When deciding the best place for your dispenser, you want to place it in a position so that it fulfills at the very minimum three of four necessary requirements. The first requirement it should fulfill is that everyone on your team can see it easily. What this means is that everyone on your team at any time, whether in the middle of a fight or even pushing to the front line, your team should be able to see it at a moment's notice. This is because the dispenser acts as a beacon, a rallying point for team members, and a reliable, constant source of health and ammunition at any point where ammo and health packs or even a friendly medic are too far away or not available. The second requirement is that it is protected by the sentry gun and is up against a wall, preferably one that gives a good field of view for your teammates. 
While the dispenser acts as a beacon for your team to rally around, as well as providing much needed health to those who desperately need it while the medic is busy juggling other patients, or even ammo to those heavy ammo users we covered in the beginner's video, it also will draw the attention of the enemy, and it is often one of the first targets for any class to destroy. Therefore, ensuring it has adequate protection is important, so keep that in mind when placing it as the safest place for it is often within the center gun's area of coverage where it can protect and cover those who are using it. The third requirement is that your dispenser should not be directly next to any of your other buildings. This doesn't mean that you shouldn't place your buildings next to each other, but what this means is that, in a worst case scenario, if you are dead, your dispenser should be far enough away from your other buildings so that if you die, it has a chance to live if the enemy storms in. The chances are low, but it's better to let the enemy destroy your sentry instead of losing both buildings to a single push. The fourth requirement is that your dispenser should instantly be visible to your teammates after they either leave spawn or through the exit teleporter. What this means is that upon leaving your teleporter or spawn, the first building they should see is your dispenser, and this will allow them to remember its location, so that if they need to retreat to rearm or get help, they know where to go thus falling into the first requirement for dispenser plate. The teleporter is a special case, as you only need to follow two conditions for teleport placement, and each condition covers either the entrance or the exit. For the exit, you want to place your entrance teleporter where the majority of your team is going to be leaving spot, so that everyone sees it as soon as they leave. For the exit, the rule changes depending on if you're attacking or defending. For attackers, you want to keep the cluster just behind the front line, but not so close that they're leaving it in the middle of a firefight or in the enemy's line of sight, where those who go through get picked off instantly. Also, when attacking, you want to make sure you keep moving the exit, so that it moves with the ever-changing front line of a battle, allowing your reinforcements to keep up the pressure and prevent defenders from pushing back. For defenders, you want to position your teleporter exit safely within the sentry gun's range of coverage, also not in the line of sight of any possible attackers, and so that it gets a reinforcement where they need to be to defend quickly. Again though, the rule applies for the teleporter as it does with the dispenser. Try not to place it directly next to any of your other buildings if possible. Otherwise, if something goes wrong, you'll lose both buildings instead of just one. This covers everything about building placement for payload. In our next part of our intermediate level, we'll discuss the tactics behind building placement for a map like 5CP and King of the Hill. Tune in then!